Hi everyone, Jaffe here, and welcome back to Around the World in Many Days. Today's episode is number 47, and it's titled Breathe, Breathe in the Air. So this time we have a crossword and a jigsaw puzzle thrown in there. Let's look at what we have. Uh, dear puzzling, this time I have a jigsaw puzzle for you. Uh, you need to first solve a crossword, and after that fill all white cells with the given pieces. Uh, pieces must be inserted as is, no rotating or mirroring, and letters and pieces must ma match the filled crossword grid. And we have some, a crossword grid with some jigsaw pieces next to it. And then the destination we're looking for is, uh, today I have breathed in the smoky air on the slopes of a very active volcano. Can you guess where I am? Love Gladys. So we are near some kind of volcano which is going to be the fi our final answer here. So let's look at the crossword clues and see what we can figure out. So as always, there's a solve link here under the, under the grid, which I have open here. So, so uh, let's look at the clues and start sto solving as always from the top corner. So one across, and uh, again, we have um, just standard crossword clues. You can always scroll down to the tags. That's crosswords, not cryptic crosswords. So let's see. So number one is speak, and we have three letters. Now, a word meaning to speak uh, could be multiple things. So I don't think we can feel that in necessarily. Um, let's try to find something that that's definitely, this, that only has one option, basically. Now, three across is to me, and that's three words, two, two, and seven. Uh, so that's a phrase meaning to me, and uh, this should be the only option, in my opinion. If you say, like, to me, this is something, in my opinion, it is. So that should be uh, the only thing that works there. Now, if, if we zoom back, just uh, zoom out just a bit and look at the the clues here. A lot of these are very short. Gig, time, any, you, like. So a lot of these are going to be words that that have a lot of meanings, like the word time. Uh, where was it here? Notoriously has so many synonyms. So um, the acrosis alone might. Um, might give us some problems, whereas these down clues, well, we have some short down clues as well, but a lot of these are longer than the, the across clues. So that could mean that we need to focus on the down clues first, but I think we'll go through these in an order that, that uh, we would normally do. And there's a reason why, but why the acrosses are, are different, but we'll go, we'll look at that when, when we get there. So we have, in my opinion, in the grid, not sure if this green is the best color here. Maybe this blue looks is better visible here because now I'm just I'm just gonna make it black so it's extra clear because I have it's pretty small on the screen. Now black I think black means that it doesn't recognize the it doesn't give us the message whether it's solved or not, but it doesn't matter. So um, this, in my opinion, gives us a ton of these starting letters. So I think we can use these to look at um, look at down clues now. So three down is Egyptian deity or Levantine self-proclaimed caliphate, and that's an abbreviation. We have an abbreviation indication here. So four letters starting with an I. Now, if it was just this self-proclaimed caliphate, that would be the Islamic State, which can be abbreviated ISIL, I-S-I-L, or I ISIS, I-S-I-S. But since we have an, another sort of clue here that's, that it has to be a, the name of an Egyptian deity as well, well, that's clearly only ISIS then, ISIS being the name on Egypt, of, a, of, of an Egyptian deity. So four down then, the Simpsons bartender, is Mo, just the person's name in that show, Mo is Sislak. Then we have um, five down, Pythia for one. Uh, in Greek mythology, Pythia was one of the oracles. 
So that's the answer there. Then we have six down, which is unwell. Three letters starting with I should be pretty clear. This is ill. You're ill, you're unwell. And there's another one, three letters starting with an I here. And that's seven. What comes after E in the Queen's monogram? Okay, so the Queen here is uh, Queen Elizabeth. And uh, the British monarchs have those monograms, those uh, short short abbreviations for, for the monarch. And Elizabeth's was E for Elizabeth, then II for second, and then R for Regina queen so iir is what's what follows e uh in that one i i and r um then we have uh, this is this eight down now so originally known as uh so um when listing someone's birth name for example uh you might use the french word ne which is either with one e or two e Two is, um, and that means originally known as what what you were what name you were born with. Um, now ten across has four crossing letters, so let's look at that. On the run, and there's two words. So one word is two letters starting with an A, and then five letters starting with an L here. And if you're on the run, on the run, you're at large. So. Um, that's the answer there, and that gives us a G for, for 11 down. A precious stone, and that's three letters starting with G, is going to be the word gem. <clears throat> now, this corner looks good. We couldn't fill in this necessarily. Uh, what about nine across? Is that breathe and in the air in parentheses? So Either just breathe or breathe in the air. And um, this is a word that comes up in special cryptics. I've seen I've seen crypt uh, this meaning in in cryptics, but I think this might be uh, a word that's mostly used for another meaning. It's inspire. You inspire something. You breathe it in, like like a gas or air or something and obviously you inspire someone has another meaning it's like you you give them ideas but that is that is one meaning in the dictionary for inspire and that is what's needed here it's also i think expire for if you breathe something out and that also means something else normally um so can we use this s now for two down British prog group. Now, of the progressive rock bands that I know, there's one three letters starting with uh, ending in S, and that's Yes. Y E S. So that's just the name of the band here. Now, we might need to know another um, uh, prog group here, and might as well reveal. Uh, what what the deal is with these acrosses? Why these are so short? So uh, this is the um, these are all the song titles from Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. So the first song is Speak, then Ah Speak to Me actually is the first one. Then Breathe, On the Run, Time, The Great Gig in the Sky, Money, Us and Them, and then there's all of these. Any color you like, Brain Damage and Eclipse. That's just the the track listing of that album. That's why some of these are like uh, pretty short. Like you wouldn't necessarily use those words to uh, to clue some of these these answers. You know, if they weren't restricted. So that's that's what's going on with the with with the acrosis there. But that shouldn't even if you don't uh, like spot that. Uh, you can just solve this as a normal crossword. It doesn't really matter that that much now this why i think this should give us this speak to speak to say now i think if you look at uh, you open the thesaurus you might see other three letter words for speak because speak is speak has a lot of synonyms but 
with the Y there, I think say is you can't we can put in say here. Um, you say something, you speak it, and that gives us a starting s for one down, small or ins insignificant. So let's say changes in is uh, wow. I cannot speak today. Insignificant, it's a slight change or a small change, a slight change. So slight is the answer. That gives us a H for 12 across, which is time. Four letters starting with a H. Uh, now that's going to be the word hour. And why is hour a synonym for time? You might say like the, the time is near, the, the hour is near. So hour in that sense means time. Um, then we have 13 down, starting with an R. And this is flea. And without this R, flea might be other things. It could be something like fly. Like to fly means to run away. But with this R, run. Should be the only one, uh, only one that works here. You run, you flee. Um, then, uh, what do we look at next? How about this 14 across? So that's a long one. The great. Uh, and that's three words, four, two, and four. So the four, first, le first word ends in L, and there's a two-letter word, and then a four-letter word. And uh, if you think of the great, as in, for example, of a sport, you might refer to them collectively as the Hall of Fame. So it doesn't have to be sport, there are halls of fame of other things, but a Hall of Fame is like the great people who were the great at some great at something collection of those people. So Hall of Fame is the answer there. And I have to be careful because uh, I tried to go recording this once before, and I had Hall of Game for. Uh, don't ask me why, but and then I couldn't figure out what was wrong with the grid. So now it's fine. It's fame, as it should be. Not Hall of Game. Let's uh, let's look at 15 down. So this starts with an A. Broadcasts and a show in parentheses. So uh, a show in parentheses saying that. It's not broadcasts noun, plural noun. It's to broadcast. And someone broadcasts a show, someone airs a show. So that's a synonym for the verb, uh, the verb pro broadcast. Now then, we have a couple of starting letters. This F and this E here. So 16 starts with an F here. Instrument used in bloodletting. Now, this might not be a common word, so we'll look at the crosses first. Uh, but if you know it, you know it, then you can put it in. But I wouldn't know it with this F, just this F, so let's move on. Let's look at 17. First adjective used to describe, describe Frankenstein's monster. Five letters starting with A here, and the, a famous quote from the film. Uh, from the uh, from when the mon monster first wakes up, is it's alive, and alive is the the adjective there. That said, I was corrected uh, regarding this because obviously the book came before the film, and alive is not the first adjective used for the monster in the book, so it's not really the first adjective ever used for that for the monster. But I mean, in the film, it is at least. You know, from when it wakes up, but that clue could have been worded differently and been maybe more correct. Anyway, um, I hope it's still still doable. Uh, Eighteen down is a slippery swimmer, and this is a crossword stable eel. Comes up all the time because those are <coughs> useful letters. Um, then we have twenty-two. Across ends in L now. In the sky. If something is in the sky, it is aerial. Aerial. Spell like this. 
gives us an E for this bloodletting tool, but we're going to solve this 25 across first to get this final crossing letter. So us and them, uh, if two sides in something are us and them, how would you describe that relationship? That would be enemies. So us and them, the oppo opposing sides of, well, basically any anything. So enemies is uh, the answer here, and that gives us a, an ending M here. And now this bloodletting tool, uh, congratulations if you know this word, it's fleam, and that's F-L-E-A-M, I want to say. Not a word I, I use, and uh, like if you're, practicing bloodletting in 2024 please stop but uh, this is a word you can find in the dictionary and apparently I once thought it was fine so um, I try to avoid words that I don't know in in crosswords but I mean there's a limit so let's look at what do we look at next 26 or 26 has the uh, starting letter let's look at that one uh, so interconnected smart devices, and that's an abbreviation. And if I'm solving a crossword and, I, and there's a three-letter answer with an abbreviation tag, it's uh, sort of terrifying because any three letters are basically a three-letter abbreviation. But uh, but this is something at least I have seen used as just those three letters. So uh, IoT, the Internet of Things, uh, means like smart devices that talk to each other. So that is the answer here. And that gives us a T for this 31 across. So color, uh, four letters starting with a T, is going to be tone. And now let's look at this 23 down next. So we have a second letter N here. Beheaded queen. Now, a queen from history that was famously beheaded. So obviously they have been multiple in history, but uh, what a, a famous case was was one of the wives of Henry VIII, and her name was Anne. I want to say Boleyn, but uh, I think there were mul multiple. He had multiple wives with the same same first name, but definitely Anne is the answer here. Um, now this is, doesn't look very helpful for this. This E doesn't look very helpful for this 29. So let's look at this 19 now. 19 was gig. If you play a gig, you play a concert as a musician. So concert, RT, concert here. Gives us a couple of starting letters that we can use. So 20 down. Starts with an O. Warren Buffett, the Oracle of. So that's just the name of a place. And I mean, this is a fixed phrase. The, the nickname of Warren Buffett is the Oracle of Omaha. He's from there. I mean, why, would, why else would he be called that? So Omaha is the answer. Uh, 21 down. C starts with a C, so lists as a source. You list something as a source, you cite it. So lists with an S at the end is cites. Someone lists something as a source, someone cites a source. So that's how that works. Then we have 24 across. So money. Money, your money is your wealth. So wealth fits here and now we have um 24 down starting with a w sequel game to the frozen throne abbreviation again a three letter abbreviation which is not great but the frozen throne is a thing it's a it's a video game and it's one of the warcraft games so its sequel was world of warcraft and that is abbreviated wow or w o w 
which now gives us a W429. So this should almost be doable now. So this is 10 letters, meaning any. And any, another word for any is whatsoever. Whatsoever means the same as any. And gives us a H for 30 down. Game of Thrones network, again three letter abbreviation. And Game of Thrones was broadcast on HBO. HBO, the TV network. Now, how do we do this? We have an E here and an E here. Not great checking letters. We have an O here. Let's look at this 33 next. U. Now, this might actually not be that doable from this O. Um, let's look at these small answers first and see if we can, because obviously U. There's no, there's no really, not really a synonym for you that fits here. But let's look at, um, look at these three-letter answers. So 33 down. Start with that one. What's not visible on the dark side of the moon? Obviously, uh, reference to the dark side of the moon, as which is the album that these songs are from. But that's not relevant here. So what is literally the dark side of? the actual moon, what's not visible there? The one very obvious thing, because it's the dark side, is that the sun is not visible there. Um, 34, down, musician Reed. Now here we just need to know the name of this musician, and it's Lou Reed, L-O-U. Then there's, um, and there's probably a way to make that because read you can play a read instrument there's probably a way to make that clue uh, like less straightforward but couldn't come up with it um so 35 part of the self now this is in, in freudian theory the the self is like the the id and then the super ego and then the the answer we need here is the ego and now can we look at this you this 33 which is you what fits here now in the crossword sense and in cryptics you sometimes see the setter being i as in the person who writes the the um, the clues refers to themselves as i well with that logic who's you that would be the solvers the people who solve the, the puzzle so solvers fits here now um, how about this 30, is it 38? Let's look at this one. Brain damage. And that's a long word. So it's going to be neuro something. And, um, and, and the answer is neurotrauma. I'm trying to think of another other word for like damage here. I think this might just be. Um, I think this might just be doable from these checking letters alone. Obviously, we could do these as well, but I'm going to put neurotrauma in. I think it, it, it's it's doable if you look up what other words there are for brain damage. I mean, there aren't that many, right? So neurotrauma. And now this that's all the checking letters we ha we're going to get for this 27 down. So that should be doable. More strained. Something is strained, it's tense, and if it's more strained, it's tenser. And tenser with an E here. Not, not the O, which would be another meaning. Uh, 36 down. Where are we? Here. Old French coin. It's just the name for, for an old, old French coin. It's Sue. Um... Obviously, France uses euros now, so there's no sous anymore, but it used to be. That's why it's old. Um, 32 down. Novel by Jane Austen. F uh, four letters ending in A. It has to be Emma. The name of the novel is Emma. And um, can we do this 36? Is the question. Now, this is the last across clue. So, like. If two things are like, 
they are similar. And obviously like can be a verb uh, as well, so uh, this might not be as easy as some of the other ones, but like as an adjective means similar. Um, then we have 37 down. We're almost, almost done here. Young man, three letters starting with, starting with an L. That should be pretty clearly lad. Uh, 39. Oh, we have another across. I was mistaken there. Sorry about that. 39 across is our last across. So eclipse. No, eclipse is a noun, but here we need to eclipse is to dim. You, you hide something in the shadow. You dim something. You eclipse it. And then we have 28 down, and that's our final clue. So 28, nonsense word from The Shining, or is it? Now, here we just need to know what nonsense words, word is used in The Shining, and you pick, take your pick, whether you use the book or the film, but both have the word red room. And no comment whether it's actual nonsense or not. But this is the finished grid. Um, so now we have the crossword done. And now we are going to have to look at the, um, the jigsaw pieces and try to fit them in this grid. Now for that, I have to fit this somehow on my screen. So bear with me. So it does fit here. Not sure how how visible these letters are once we start start coloring this, but we're gonna try. Maybe use this gray so it doesn't interfere with our letters. That said, maybe we don't actually need the letters that much. There are a couple of letters obviously in these pieces and they need to match what's in the grid here. Um, so how do we fit these though? So the, um, the instruction was that these go in the white areas. So we don't put, put them like this. We put them like, like this. So only in the white areas. And we can't turn them or mirror them or do anything else to, to change the shape. So what do we start with here? Um, first of all, these are all seven squares. Seven cells, are they? Looks like they are. So um, there aren't like small or large ones that we can, uh, if there were, we would probably like try to fit the large ones in, in first because those will have fewer options. But, um, but here I think we can look at these, uh, these letter, given letters. That's going to be uh, limit the options that we can uh, sort of, where we can put this these pieces that have given letters. So this one has a Y, this one has a G, V, and an S. Now S is a common letter. We have many S's in the grid. But G, V, and Y, let's look at those. So maybe this Y first. Where can this Y go? And remember, we have to put this shape in that exact uh, configuration. We can't change it in any way. So Y can't go there. Can't put it like this. There are blocks in the way. We could put it like this. This Y works. How many Y's do we have? Are there any other Y's? If there aren't, we can just put that in immediately. No, that's all the Y's in the grid. So this Y, the only place where it fits is here. So we can put that in and then we need to probably make some lines as well. Try not lines, edges. They are lines, but I mean, edges are what we call them here. Now, is this visible enough or should I just get rid of my face and make this even bigger? The problem is even if I make this bigger, I have to scroll scroll uh, to the right to get to see these pieces. I think it's better if I fit them all in one screen. Yeah, yeah, I think it's better like this. So we have one piece now in the uh, 
in here and now we can start looking at what else goes in there. So I'm going to black out this piece now. We, we have used it. We, we're not going to want to uh, get confused and put this same piece in again. So that one's in there. And now we can start looking at what pieces go around this one. Now, especially to the left here, if we start looking at what piece this N is part of, and keep in mind that each of these is seven uh, cells long. So this is now part of um, what cells are necessarily part of this piece. So this has to be here, here, and here. And now once it reaches this cell, obviously these cells are, uh, aren't going to be left on their own because there are no uh, one cell pieces and uh, we have to fill everything, uh, all the white cells. So these are both in this piece and that's six cells and we need one more and this is the only one that can be there. So this shape is already forced by the fact that this this Y shape was there or this uh, Greek pie shape I guess. So this uh, sort of inverse seven uh, is forced and we have this shape right here. Uh, so we can delineate this first of all that this is a shape and then we can black out and we don't have any other of these inverse sevens we have the same shape in in a different sort of position a couple of times but this is the only one that fits here now we can ask the same question about some of these cells so let's look at uh, let's see this S here. What cells is it going to take? Well, it has to take this I because if it didn't, if it didn't take this I, it, it would have at maximum this. Yeah, I'm wrong. Sorry, that's seven. I was thinking uh, it must take this because this wouldn't take seven cells. I was wrong. Let's look at it, it again. Um, so this can avoid taking this i, this s, uh, and the only way it does avoid that is taking these seven cells. And we have um, have a shape like that here. Now if this s, uh, and indeed any of these, uh, any of these letters basically, if they take this i, now what does that mean? Um, there are seven white cells here. Now they can't all be part of this I piece because this would be at least eight letters, uh, eight cells. And we need a seven cell piece. If this I takes any of these seven, now there's not enough space for a, a piece in, in the corner here, in this white area. And I can't, the I can't take all of those. So the only way to fit a piece here is that the I is in another piece, uh, is a completely different piece, and all of these are the same piece then. So these all form one piece, and that piece has to be exactly this one. Now, what I didn't mention at all yet is that these, some of these pieces have uh, red highlighted cells and blue highlighted cells, and we're going to have to uh, highlight the same cells w once we put when we put these in the grid. So I'm highlighting this corner here, this Y, with in red. Now then, we didn't use this I yet, but we can look at the I next and think about what uh, cells must be part of the same same piece as this I. So obviously, where does this I grow? It goes in this direction. That's three cells. It has to take this one. This can't be left alone. So that's four, and then that's five, six, and seven. That's only one way to go. And that fills up our seven cells. All of those are forced, and there is a piece like that, which is this one here. So that's, and that's the only one that fits. So this piece, oh, sorry, that's the, the line again. So this piece already forced. And 
we can black out this uh, this piece that we just used and we can black out this one that we used and i forgot to black out just now so can we extend this logic then can we look at this u for example now this u has to take this n but then it could go in two different uh, go two different ways for example it could go like this and be this piece it could go where could it go it could be uh, almost could be like this piece but that would actually leave the c c stranded uh, do we have any other options i think this is the only option but uh, it's maybe not more, not as clear let's look at this corner first so what's this p going to be part of so that's going to be the the top left corner piece of uh, the top left corner cell of its piece so where is it going to be now it has to take this i and uh, and then it goes down or to the right now what cell can that be what what shape can that be can't be this because we don't have this this cell here it could be this sort of capital i piece it could be like this uh it can't be this one there's a black cell here and it can't be any piece where there's no um no cell in the sort of top left corner so it can't be this can't be this can't be this can't be this g because this p is not a g can't be this because there's no corner there's no corner here there's no corner here 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 or here so all in all uh, we have a couple of pieces that still have this corner so this g was out but this one could work this seven would be here here and then this black prevents that from being the seven so this can't work uh, this we saw can't work because of this black cell here and uh, we haven't looked at this v piece so this n is not a v so it doesn't work for multiple reasons so this i here is the only one only piece that fits here and once we fill that in mark the borders here and black out the, the piece we used i think after that we can see what's happening in this corner more easily so in this corner let's look at use the same logic as, as we used with the i here this g can this the piece that this g is part of can it take any of these green cells these seven green cells now if it takes one of them or any of them that means this this green area is less than seven cells and it can't be a piece so then this g would have to take all of them if this this g takes all of these it's eight cells and uh, you know we don't have eight cell pieces here these are all seven cells have i counted that there are all they're all seven 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 yeah they're all seven cells just so we know so uh so this g has to be separate from this green area so we can mark this edge and this edge and once we do that this green area has to be a piece of its own so this is a piece and now we can we had this blacked out piece we can't use that again but we have another piece <clears throat> that um that we can use which is the same shape so black that one out can't use that again and now look at this g then now mm, yeah yeah we can we can look at the g because 
this this G has to be the topmost cell. Let me just show it. So this G has to be the topmost cell of its uh, uh, of its piece, and it has to go has to be down th three cells coming down. So uh, it can't be this one because it's only two cells coming down, and then we would have these cells here, part of the piece. Can't do that. And we have to have the top piece um, on, a, on its separate row. There can't be any other uh, sort of um, any other peaks here on the same row because this G, uh, we can't, this piece cannot come back to this row. So it, it can't be this, for example. So what can it be then? Then we have, there we have the G. So this looks very promising. That's, that's a stretch of three and it could go like this. That fits, that works. Let's look at what other options we have. So the top cell going down three. So it can't be this, can't be this because these, this, uh, the, this horizontal stretch would be here. That doesn't work. This doesn't go down three. We have multiple on this top row, multiple cells on this top row, multiple cells on top row. Here as well, this doesn't go three down. This goes three down, but it goes down a fourth. That's not allowed. This doesn't go down three, and this has multiple cells on the top row. So only this G here works. So we can fill in this piece, mark the edges, and then remember to black out the, the piece that we used. So this one is what we used here. Now, this corner doesn't look as restricted as as this one as the the previous one so maybe we look at this v now v and maybe the s as well the the given letters and see whether we can use those so where are our v's in in white we can't use obviously can't put a piece next uh, on top of another piece so there's a v here is that our only v there's a v here so a couple of v's there's a third. Let me, let me just make them green. Uh, so three Vs. What can this piece be part of? So let's see. Could it be part of this? And that works. So this shape fits here. Does it fit here? V and then here doesn't fit. There's no nothing under the V here. And nothing un under the V here either. So these are out. We can't do this either because we're using these black black uh, cells. So this V is the only V that we can use here for this piece. And that's a piece like this. Now then, um, mark the edges again. And then did we have any highlighting? Did, did this G piece have highlighting? Forgot to look at that because we have to... No, this didn't. Okay, so we are not behind on the highlighting thing, I don't think. So we highlighted this one. I'm just gonna double check so that we don't get a wrong answer here. This didn't have anything, this didn't have anything. This I didn't have anything to highlight. This Y did, okay, so we did miss something. So. Next to the Y, we're going to have to highlight that cell in, in blue. So we missed that one. Glad I double checked. And this inverse 7 had nothing. Okay. So now it should be, now we should be up to date with the highlighting. So Y and M here. And this V didn't have any highlighting, and we can black that out as well. Okay. So now this looks very constr uh, constrained, this, um, this corner here. So. Let's look at this F. Now this F is important because this, uh, if we put a wall here, this blocks off this sort of area of whites and that is eight cells. Now this F, whichever piece it's part of, has to take one more cell from these uh, white, uh, white cells. Oh, this, how do I show it? This F has to take one more cell from these green to make the green area seven cells. Now it can take this F, or it can take this L. Now, let's look at 
pieces that are this four cells and then three cells up and with one more cell and see with which pieces fit here. So there's no four vertical cells here, four vertical cells, but it doesn't go up. What has four vertical cells? This piece works. So this would be here and then here, this piece. And then this F would take this L. Are there any others? This is five cells that doesn't work. This is six cells that doesn't work. No four cells. This is four cells, but those these go down, can't go down here. And these don't work, no four cell stretch uh, horizontally. So this piece is the only one that fits in the green area here. And that means the green area takes this cell as well. So let's draw some edges again. And then we color this in. So it's grays. And then we have a red, which is the A here. Red A. And now we can black out this piece that we just used. And now this L, we can look at uh, what cells this, uh, this F must take. So L must take this one, must take this one, must take this one. Now these C and E are stranded. They, are, they can't be one cell pieces. So these are both taken by this piece. And now this piece is six cells and there's only one, one cell where it can grow. So it's this one. So this is forced. So this is sort of a seven on its side. Is, is the technical term? No, it isn't. Uh, but yeah, what piece can? Oh, sorry, what can? What piece can this then be part of? Oh, oh, which which piece is this one? So this one works. So this is the only piece that is in this direction. So this is the the mirror image, and this is a rotated one. But and this is a rotated one. But this is the only one that that completely fits. And that means that we have to highlight this O here in blue. Once we do that, again, black out this piece so we don't use it again. And the same logic now continues. So we can look at this H here. What, which H must be part of a piece. That piece must extend to seven cells. So that's the second cell, third and fourth. And after the fourth, we have two, which it must take because otherwise those would be stranded. Fifth and sixth, and now the seventh is there. And again, we have this um, this seven basically, uh, which is this is the only only seven in the correct orientation. So let's mark the the edges here, and then we have to highlight this S because of this um, because of this red highlighting. We have to highlight the the S here. And once we do that, we can black out this piece. And now we are, we are about halfway done. What can we look at next? Now here we have this sort of cross sequence has to be part of one piece. So if we start with this A, this A has to be part of a piece. It has to grow up to seven cells. So it has to take this one, has to take this, then can grow, only grow in one direction, and that's here. And once it grows up to here, which is six cells, it has to take one more, and that must be taken because otherwise that's stranded. And that shape is this shape here. So this sort of upside down seven. And uh, we can mark this as, as a shape. And then careful with the highlighting again. We need to highlight this N with this blue. And once we do that, again, black out this piece so we don't use it again. Now, um, where do we go next? This T is is forced. There's, there can only be one piece that fits this T here. Let's go through it again. So this T has to be part of a piece. It has to grow only one way to go up to here. It has to take this one because otherwise that's stranded. That's five, five cells. Sixth one has to be here. Seventh one has to be here. So only one way to get to this T here again, and then we can look at what piece that is. So that piece, four, four to the right and then one up and two down, that's this one. 
and yeah that's the other that's the only piece that fits here and there's nothing to highlight so we can just black out this one now what about this u this u uh, again has to be part of a piece has to grow that's now five letters this is six and now this a has to be part of it so that's seven and that's this shape here in the corner so black this out and mark the edges as well uh, the reason i'm marking these edges is so it's clearer where uh, um, a piece starts and where it ends now what do we look at next do we look at this s this given s i think that's useful to look at because we don't have that many given letters in this uh, in this puzzle so let's look at the s's and where that s can be and obviously now that we've filled in so much of the grid we only have a limited number of options so this s has four options it can't be this one because this this uh this cell above it wouldn't be possible in the in that uh sorry in in that piece this s can't be part of it because there's no there's a black here yeah so this s can't be part of it now this s can't be part of it because it would go here and then take this black cell so this s is out it has to be this s and that works because we can go here and then take these two and this is the same shape as this one so we can mark the edges here we don't have to uh, uh, highlight anything so the coloring is done we have edges now and we can black out this piece so we have used all the um, all the given uh, letters now this uh, since we have this in the grid now this Actually, both this U and this O are, are restricted, but let, let's look at this O first. So the O has to be part of a piece. That piece has to grow. So this one, two, three, four. And so that's four cells. Where does it go next? <clears throat> so uh, the options are this, this sort of corner. is We can see it here. And we can see it here. And we can see it here, but this doesn't really work because there's nothing under it that we can use. Can't use this cell. So really, we have two options. Either it's part of this this piece, sorry, this piece, in which case it goes, takes these three cells as these three, or the other option is it's part of this piece, in which case it takes uh, one to the right and then one above and one below from this well it can't take one below can't take this cell because that's part of another piece so this is out the only piece that works is this one so this o extends here and then up and here and that's this piece so mark the edges nothing to highlight here and we can black out this piece. <clears throat> now this U is very, very forced. I think this U again has to grow. So that's five, that's four, that's five. And now after this five, we have to take these two and that makes up seven. And that's this piece here. So again, some edges. Only once you start drawing in these edges, you can't just leave it halfway. And then we have to highlight this top cell here in blue. So that's this U here. And then we black out the piece so that we don't use it again. I don't think it's really a problem. That's, it's unlikely to fit anywhere else. But anyway, better to do it just in case. So what about this T? Where does this T grow? It has to be part of a piece has to take this cell, has to take this cell because otherwise that's stranded. That's four and that's five. And after the five, we now have two stranded pieces, which uh, cells with which it must, which it must take 
And when it takes these two, that's seven cells. And that is this piece here, which is doesn't have any highlighting. So again, draw edges here, 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 and here. And then since we didn't have anything to highlight, we can black out this piece that we just used. Now we have four pieces left and hopefully 28 white cells. I'm not going to count them, but let's see. So what is this U part of? What is this U in the corner part of? It can't be part of this because it would be here. Uh, there's no corner, corner cell here. Can't be part of this cell, uh, part, part of this piece because it would continue this way from here. Um, can't be part of this piece because it would be, would have to take this black cell. So the only option is this corner piece here, which is, which fits. It's this shape here. And that means this U has to be highlighted in red. So let's do that. Let's draw some edges. And we black out this piece. So three options left. Um, where does this one go? It has a stretch of six cells horizontally. Um, and that has to be part of here, part of this. Here we have eight cells. So basically three options. It could be here where it fits. And I mean, this looks correct, doesn't it? This is seven cells and this is seven cells. The other option is here, six cells, but then we would have to use this black cell. That's not allowed. And the other option is this, these six cells and this one. But now we have a five cell um, area of, of white and we can't fit a, another piece here. So that's wrong as well. So the first one we tried, which was this, that has to be correct. The only way this fits in the grid with the other pieces. So that means we get to draw some more edges. And we can mark the edges for these as well, because these has to be, have to be the two remaining pieces. And we'll look at the highlighting in a minute. So this, this piece here had a, had a blue cell at the, at the very left. So this T is highlighted and then we can black that out. Now this cell, uh, this piece here is not, um, doesn't have any highlighting, so we can just black that out. And then the final piece, which is this one here, has a red cell on the, in the uh, left, bottom left corner. So this R has to be highlighted and the others are gray. And we black that out just just for completeness. So this is the finished uh, jigsaw. Now, uh, what does this give us? Um, and we need a, the name of a volcano. Well, um, we can read out the highlighted letters now. And we have uh, two types of them. We have reds and blues. So the, the blues, if we look at them separately, they spell out M-O-U-N and T. That is the word mount, which looks like a good word for the name of a volcano, and the reds spelled, spell out Y, A, S, U, and R. So that's Mount Yasu, and we can look up where that is. So Mount Yasu is in Vanuatu, and that is a very active volcano that you can visit. And here it is smoking, and actually had it had a photo of it which is pretty spectacular. And you can you can visit it in Vanuatu. So that's where Gladys is traveling currently. And uh, let's look at our map then. So last time we were in Bougainville, in Papua New Guinea, came out this way, and now we are in Vanuatu. So that's our, oh, what's happening with, the map, with my map here? There we are. So we are in Vanuatu now. So that's, that's um, the solution for, for episode 47. And uh, 
what do we have for episode 48? Doing what I always do. And yeah, the episode 48 will be called Wreck Exploration. And I will see you guys for that one. And for this one, thanks for watching.